Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're gonna briefly break down the tactical issues that Barcelona encountered against Gattuso's Napoli. But when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Napoli in a 4-3-3. Without the ball, they ended up shifting out into a 4-5-1. And here they did spend large spells of time out of possession. What we ended up seeing there is that we have Barcelona in their 4-3-3. Messi starting off in a central role in between Maximovic and Manolas. We had had Vidal adopting a wider position ahead of Mario Rui and we should have Griezmann ahead of Di Lorenzo but he often shifted a bit narrow to adopt his position just ahead of Manolas and Di Lorenzo. In midfield we should be seeing Rakitic against Zielinski and we should be seeing Fabian Ruiz against De Jong with perhaps Deme stepping out into the path of Busquets but the key theme in this game was how Gattuso did instruct his side to press and hold their shape when Barcelona were in possession. What you end up seeing there is that we ended up having Rakitic and De Jong initially in between the shuttler and the wide Napoli player. So that would see Rakitic in between Insigne and Zielinski. And you would see De Jong in between Calleon and Fabian Ruiz. But rather than going man v man in midfield, we saw a tactical shift from Gattuso. He instructed his wider players to drop off a bit narrow to keep that midfield line congested and tight and it did free up space for the fullbacks to push forward but without Jordi Alba in that Barcelona starting lineup you would like to think that most teams have allowed Barcelona's fullbacks to get forward knowing that they don't offer a significant threat in their box so that's what Napoli did here and we ended up seeing Insigne adopting space ahead of Rakitic to press him and we saw Calleon tuck narrow to close down De Jong when he looked to get on the ball so you have have the wider players tucking in to close down the shuttlers. You have the midfield bank in between Fabrin Ruiz, Deme, and Jelinski very tight. And that would allow space for the fullbacks to push forward. But if you had Semedo and you had Firpo pushing forward, whenever they did receive the ball, that would see Di Lorenzo or it would see Mario Rui shift across. What can be said about Napoli's setup is that if they have the fullbacks pressing the fullbacks, that could create space for Griezmann or Vidal to dart into if Barcelona moved the ball quickly. But whenever that was the case, let's for instance say that Vidal got played in behind Mario Rui by Semedo, then you would have Maximovic shift across to close that down. And the same thing applied for Griezmann. He was tracked by Manolas. So with the fullbacks and the midfield shuttlers marked out of the game, we get to Busquets, who was tracked diligently by Dries Mertens, who dropped off a bit deeper to ensure that all Barcelona midfielders were stifled out of the game. That leaves the center backs as the only spare men to push forward, and Napoli allowed PK and Um Titi to push forward with the ball but whenever they did approach that halfway line let's for instance say that Umtiti was looking to break forward then you would have Zielinski step out to close him down and vice versa if PK is pushing forward Fabian Ruiz would push into that position Barcelona were pressed out of the game and they couldn't play balls in between the lines or find Lino Messi. We did see some positional variance from Barcelona's attacking players. There were times where we did see Vidal move away from his narrow positioning ahead of Mario Rui to hold the touchline and that would force Mario Rui to step out into that path. So if Mario Rui steps out into the path of Vidal, that would end up seeing Insigne being forced to press the meadow and that's when we would have Zielinski step out into the path of Rakhine and vice versa. If Griezmann did hold the touchline, Di Lorenzo would shift out to him, Calion would push into the path of Junior Firpo, and then we would have Fabian Ruiz step into the path of De Jong to ensure that Barcelona are covered across that pitch. Ultimately, the biggest issue that Barcelona had here was that they couldn't get Messi involved in the game. There were times where we had Griezmann shifting ahead of the center backs, Messi pushing ahead of Mario Rui and Vidal holding the touchline, but that didn't work. Essentially, we did have Vidal holding the touchline with Messi ahead of Mario Rui and Maximovic, but again, you can't find passes in between the lines. And there were also times where Vidal was occupying the touchline and we saw Semedo trying to attack on the overlapping run. Nonetheless, as that game continued, we had Messi moving from a central position to the left-hand side in between Mario Muri and Maximovic. He eventually did push ahead of Insigne and Shulinski to try and get on the ball. And it came to a point where we ended up seeing Messi drop as deep as Dries Mertens to pick up the ball in possession. The problem that Barcelona had 
here wasn't the fact that Messi was dropping off a bit deeper. It's understandable based off the fact that Napoli's shape was so good. But when Messi drops off into these positions, the issue here is that there's no midfield runners. Like I said, De Jong and Rakitic are marked under the game and the only player that you could see making that run is frankly De Jong. Griezmann wasn't looking to dart him behind and his positioning was very static unless he was trying to break into wider areas. And frankly, when you have Messi in the zone, this is the, one of the occasions where you do miss Jordi Alba. Because whenever we see Messi drop off into these right central zones to cut central onto his left foot, you would often see Jordi Alba making that darting run in behind the defense. And that's where we saw the combination play between those two for several Barcelona goals in the past. You don't have that here. And essentially, Messi is looking to occupy positions on that right side of the pitch, but he was often boxed out or ahead of two Napoli defenders at all times. There was actually one situation in particular where we had Messi occupied by six Napoli players. He was in that box in between Zielinski and Signe and the head of Maximovic and Mario Rui. And it came to a point where we had Dries Mertens dropping off and Deme shifting across to ensure that we didn't have Messi getting the ball freely and looking to break towards goal. So if Messi couldn't find runners when he dropped off deeper to play penetrative passes to, you would hope that a Barcelona player would be able to find Messi between the lines. And the only player that was capable of playing that penetrative pass was Sergio Busquets. There was one example in particular where you have Busquets away from Dries Mertens for a bit, and he was able to split Mertens and Jelinski and Deme and Fabian Ruiz to find Lino Messi, who squared the ball out to Rakitic, and Rakitic slid the ball across Insigne for Vidal, but Vidal's cross from that right channel was over hit. Meanwhile, when we look to Barcelona, there were brief phases where they did have to press, and the big shift here is that without Luis Suarez, they're able to have more balance and defensive cover as they shift into a 4-5-1 with the ball and that takes away Messi's defensive duties and they drop off Griezmann to the right to ensure that he could close down those Napoli fullbacks. So you have Vidal and you have Griezmann closing down the fullbacks and then like I said the midfield battle stayed the same. Zielinski was closed down by Rakitic and we also ended up seeing De Jong step out into the path of Fabian Ruiz and we would have Busquets step forward to close down Deme and if Busquets didn't look to push forward Rakitic would take that job and we'd have Busquets shift across to close down Fabian Ruiz. So that's how Barcelona looked to close down Napoli from the front. Nevertheless, Napoli were able to take the lead with one of their only opportunities in that half. And it stemmed from Fabian Ruiz dropping off a bit deeper to pick up the ball from Manolas. And what we end up seeing here now is that Fabian Ruiz should be closed down by De Jong, but he doesn't step and neither does Busquets. And Ruiz is able to split those two players to find Jelinski, who is dropping off ahead of Pique. So Jelinski receives the ball between the lines and before PK can make a challenge, he attempts to turn. But PK gets that challenge and he ends up directing the ball off Junior Firpo and it bounces right back into the path of Jelinski who charges past Firpo. And as we have Umtiti and PK looking to recover, Jelinski pulls back the ball in between the center backs and across the meadow for Dries Mertens. And before any Barcelona player can step out to Mertens, he curls a superb effort past Ter Stegen. But in that first half, it was solely about Napoli's shape. They ensured that Barcelona couldn't play out in the wider areas. They stifled those central zones so Messi couldn't play penetrative passes and that he couldn't receive them. And they ensured that Busquets couldn't dictate the tempo of the game from deep, ultimately nullifying Barcelona's overall threat. So going into that second half, we were expecting Setien to make some significant tactical changes. But when we looked at the second half, rather than seeing a significant tactical change from Setien, we did see minor adjustments from Gattuso. Rather than having the wider players close down the Barcelona shuttlers, now we saw them shift out into wider areas to protect Di Lorenzo and Mario Rui as Semedo and Firpo did push forward. Meanwhile, now with the Napoli wide players looking to close down the fullbacks, that did create more space for Rakitic and De Jong to adopt space in between the Napoli shuttler and the Napoli wide player, with De Jong often taking more adventurous positions ahead of the center back and the fullback. And on top of that, we had Messi dropping off a bit deeper in search of the ball, but the issue now wasn't solely the fact that Barcelona didn't have runners getting into good spaces or breaking in behind. Now the problem was that Messi simply wasn't connecting passes with his teammates. The game ultimately did take a shift on its head when we had 
Milik replaced Mertens, who was forced to leave the game due to injury. And what we ended up seeing from Milik now is rather than sitting on Busquets, he would look to push forward and harry the center backs. And we saw Setien turn to his bench to bring on Artur for Rakitic to offer a bit more attacking verve as Artur would look to push forward more. Nonetheless, that slight adjustment that Gattuso was forced into allowed Busquets to get more involved in the game and ultimately he was involved in Barcelona's equalizer. And when we look to the build up to that goal, we have De Jong sliding the ball across Milik into the path of Busquets. Busquets locates Messi dropping off of Insigne to receive the ball and Messi instantly plays it back to Busquets and then Messi gets it back. What Messi does here is that he ends up splitting Insigne and Jelinski to find Vidal ahead of Maximovic and Vidal plays that ball back to Busquets and with Deme looking a step forward and Maximovic pulled out of position by Vidal. What we end up seeing here now is that finally we have that advancing run from Semedo and Busquets is able to split Deme and Maximovic to play the ball across Mario Rui. What we should also identify here is that Griezmann is occupying Di Lorenzo and Manolas but when the ball is shifted out to Semedo beyond Mario Rui. Those two players did step forward, but Mario Rui kept his positioning, which kept Griezmann onside. So Semedo gets that ball in that right half space, and all he has to do is simply play it across to Griezmann, who taps it in from point-blank range. But in that scenario alone, we see how Barcelona were able to get back into the game, and it does stem from a few shifts in Gattuso's tactics. With Mertens on the field, Busquets probably doesn't get that much time on the ball. We had Messi drop off a bit deeper as well which does help and on top of that those are the two players that were capable of consistently playing penetrative passes on the rare occasion in that game and in the build-up to that goal you had Messi splitting lines to find Vidal and then you had Busquets splitting lines to find Semedo pushing forward and Semedo pushing forward was a slight shift from Setien as he looked to push the fullbacks forward which essentially did force the wider players to close them down but when you break down the game as a whole this was about Napoli's wonderful shape out of possession. They were able to stifle Barcelona, limit their productivity in wider areas, ensure that they couldn't play through midfield, and limit Messi's overall impact. We did see some moments of individual brilliance from Messi, but whenever he got into that final third, he simply lacked that final pass. And when he did drop off a bit deeper, he simply didn't have any runners breaking him beyond. And on the rare occasion where he did find openings, he was un able to connect those passes. When, it was, when we look at Napoli, although their shape was good, it was a shame that we didn't see them push forward more often. Their approach was a bit conservative and that's understandable, but given Barcelona's overall shape and form this season, you would think that Napoli would fancy their chances here. Whenever they did get forward, they looked dangerous and they forced Ter Stegen into some saves, and frankly, they may rue the fact that they weren't a bit more adventurous. But let me know what you guys think. Can Napoli pull off the shock of the round and knock Barcelona out of the Champions League? And how do you think Kike Setien should approach the second leg? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And once again, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.